For every parent, this is the most enjoyable moment, seeing their children play happily and dream big about their future. No parent would be ready to witness what the Chandler saw one morning of March 2013. Aja Chandler, an 11-year-old girl, a smart student and an active soccer player, went to her room full of life. A young girl with normal curiosity to discover and to play. Yet, the game she chose wasn't a game at all. Her father discovered her hanging from the ceiling, a belt around her neck. Aja was playing the deadly choking game. When I first found Aja dead, my initial thought was, oh my God, my, my daughter is hanging by a belt. And I knew right away she was dead. Aja's killer was the choking game. This game aims to cut off the oxygen and the blood supply to the brain. Children play it by choking one another or by self-suffocation. If the strap or the banding is not released on time, of course they can suffer brain damage which could vary in nature from being um, as uh, mild as some cognitive defect with memory changes and mood changes to and memory and uh, uh, short-term aggression to more serious side effects like uh, stroke uh, seizures and it can eventually r uh, result in death. Children play this game to achieve what they think it will give them a temporary high and for these few minutes of the high Aja Chandler paid her life. Curiosity. She was always, she was a very smart girl. Um, I would definitely say curiosity for Asia. Always, uh, you know, wanting to do something new, you know, trying something different, but not something like this. According to the 2007 Ontario Student Drug Use and Health Survey, about 7% of Ontario students have tried the choking game. 75% at least of kids know about the choking game, but only 25%, and I think even less in some areas, of parents know about it. Aja's parents knew about the choking game, but they never imagined they would need to engage in such a discussion with their athletic daughter. <sighs> I, I don't know about saying I feel sorry. I, I never in a million years think that this would even happen. Like, it, it, it's like, if I knew more, like, like we, we've, like, we've talked to, to her about smoking, about drugs, about just things that, you know, I always have to wear a seatbelt. Those are the bad things. You have to wear a seatbelt. You don't ever smoke because you're going to, you're, you're going to get cancer and die. You don't ever, you know, we discuss those things, but the choking game was not on that list. In the era of the internet, all kinds of information is available for children to discover, learn, and maybe experiment with. And while education is essential, parents are often terrified to discuss the choking game with their children. Parents need to talk to their kids about it. And I say this is the kind of education, like drug education, sex education, that belongs in the home. This is this is way too important to leave this kind of education to anyone else. After Aja's death, her parents looked for the signs, whether their daughter tried this deadly game before. To their sad discovery, the signs were always there, but had gone unnoticed. I guess I might have noticed uh, belts kind of tied in a pulled all the way through in a loop, but I didn't really think anything of it. Some of the warning signs are you look for bloodshot eyes, you look for re redness on the neck, or wearing high collars all the time. If your child is wearing high collars all the time, especially in the summer, you need to be observant. Parents have to be very, very observant. Are they spending a lot of time in their bedroom? Are they showing a more crankiness, more irritability than usual? The Chucky game is not a new activity, but recently YouTube and social media start to put demonstration on how it can be done solo at the children's
fingertips. The reason why children are at risk for dying when they do it by themselves is because they don't let go on time. If within five to seven minutes you are dead, it, you know, if you, if you haven't let go on time, you die. The children don't intend to die, but the outcome is they can die. Because of that, another common confusion around this hidden game happens, skewing the statistics. A lot of kids who have died from the choking game, it was misdiagnosed as suicide because the children are found with ropes or something around their neck that has caused them to suffocate and eventually die. According to a survey by the Crime Victims Institute, most college students had heard of the game. The survey found that males were more likely to play it than females, and the average age at which they first played the game was 14. The important piece in that survey was that learning about the potential dangers served as a deterrent for the majority of non-participants. I think if she knew, I definitely, she would not try it. I 100% would think that. Aja didn't know the consequences. She played and she died. She had so many things still to accomplish in her short life. You know, to be with you here today, it, uh, it's difficult. And, and I wish every day it wasn't, it wasn't us sitting here having to deal with, with losing a child. But I think it's important because I don't want other, other people, you know, to lose their kids. Next to the fountain that they built in their backyard in the memory of their daughter, Joe and Sopa placed an angel, a few roses, and a poem engraved on the rock. If tears could build a stairway and memories a lane, I'd walk right up to heaven and bring you home again. Ada Chandler, a beautiful young girl, a smart student, a vivid athletic and another victim of the choking game. For Mediaplex News, I'm Lubna Fawaz.